Hi, you guys. Welcome back to my channel. Um, for or welcome to my channel. If this is your first time being here, my name is Chanel, and I am an intuitive astrologer and tarot card reader. And I'll be providing you with this week's forecast of what is this, April twenty second to April twenty eighth. So we're gonna take some time really quickly to go through the astrology. Um. We have a lot going on this week, guys. At first, I wanted to say, like, oh, it's going to be an easy week, but yeah, not so much. <laughs> um, I am sitting here at the park, and excuse the picture quality. I actually left my camera at home. So um, we're going to start off by taking a look at the transits for the week. We're going to go through the... Um, the calendar here online and I hope you guys are having a pretty good week so far um it's Monday I'm actually getting this out a lot later than I expected to but you know I'm just this is new for me so and I'm looking over because I'm trying to get the site up but um you know, just trying to find a happy medium between uh, life and work, you know. So, um, let me see here. Let me pull this up. And I really don't even need to show you that, show you guys that. So, I did write some notes. So I'm going to be looking down at those a little bit. So let's see, we just came from a full moon on the 19th in Libra. And, you know, usually full moons are about expanding and being seen, which isn't, which really this full moon wasn't opposed to that. But this was uh, a lot about going within and really um, listening to that inner voice and seeing what it is. Um, that that we needed to look at as far as the changes that we are making or more so the transformations that we are taking especially with the uranus being in taurus and the sun uh now moved into taurus as well so you know this was a uh, looking at our changes our transformations and our self-worth and our values and really just taking stock at what that has been you know has that been serving us where we are and what are the things that what other ways can we feel better about ourselves you know how much more can we love ourselves what can we do more to support ourselves in a way that is going to help us show up more confidently and more grounded in the world you know so let me see what's today 22nd we had venus going to aries on the 20th the sun went into taurus on the 20th jupiter just went into retrograde and mercury just went into aries as well so a little bit with this aries energy you know that venus and mercury coming out of pisces that's like us exiting out this kind of foggy area more of a psychic time being really internal and now with mercury and venus we're like oh okay i'm ready to project my love i'm ready to uh, act on all these downloads that i've had you know and really make them real you know really be out there and be outspoken and really take initiative in that um I actually personally have my Venus, my natal Venus and Mercury in Aries. And I can say some things that are helpful are just, you know, making plans and making sure that you stay on track with what it is you're doing because Aries energy can move so quickly, you know, and it can really just, um, our thoughts can be from one place to the next place, you know, and making plans with this and really getting solid with all of, especially coming from out of that Pisces energy who's kind of all over the place, kind of like that 
seven of cups, having so many choices. Oh, I'm understanding this. I'm understanding that. I see this this way. I see this this that that way. And oh, let me listen really quick. This is coming in. So maybe I wasn't seeing that clearly. And I'm still not really sure if I'm seeing this clearly. But you know, now we're in Mercury in Aries, and it's pretty clear. Everything's pretty freaking clear, you know. And it's just a matter of acting on that and staying consistent with that because Aries is like a hot shot from here to there. You know, it can invest energy into something and just be like, okay, I'm bored with this. Like, what's next? You know, so we've learned a lot about ourselves. And in that, this is helping us to be a little bit more sure that this is what it is that we want to do you know so um let me see we've you know where it is that we needed to level up for ourselves to bring out the best of our relationships you know how it is that we handle our finances how it is that we value ourselves um what it is that we see worthy and worth our time and how it is that we've been connecting with ourselves on um, a conscious level and what and how this has been manifesting out into our world you know and now like I said just applying those actions really well um so let me see okay so really also being patient with ourselves through these changes because Aries like I said is it's a hot shot, you know, it can be really, really impatient. Um, and like, I have multiple planets in Aries, you know, so I know what that's like. And growing up with that, I really had to grow into that patience. Um, it's been a process, but it is possible to really, um, sorry, it's stuff going on out here, but I'm focused here with you guys. Um, you know, with the understanding, with with learning, with taking time comes a great understanding, you know, and really um choosing to manifest what it is that we desire, honestly. So um and the patience is good because with the quick movement with the Aries energy, that Mars energy, Aries is good for missing the details. You know, it wants to see the big picture and it's like, ah, oh, this is my plan and this is where I'm headed, you know, so I'm gonna do this. But it is the fine things, those that really brings everything together. And um that the strong leadership energy can sometimes push us to the finish line, not realizing that we only got here so soon because we missed a few things, you know? So let us just really take this time to focus on those details, you know, and that is gonna help us in the long run. Um, and I mean, that can also, uh, it's not a terrible thing to miss the details because sometimes we might not need all of those details, but um, the details are better. Um, you know, sometimes, in our personal journeys, we all need something different. But right now, where, we, where we're at in this energy, in this time, in this space, like we need that, we need that consistency. We need that, um, we need those plans to really support us in our goals. We need those routines and to really help ground us in everything. So, okay. Um, Let's see. On the 22nd, which is today, we have had the moon in Sagittarius, right? So this is at a trine to this Venus, Chiron, Mercury, Aries energy. And this is really speaks a lot of initiating of healing surrounding our identity, our relation to the masculine in our life as well, especially um, with women, feminine as us being feminine beings. You know, and how it is that we love ourselves and talk to ourselves, um, and just having really clear understanding in these facets when it comes to um, our interaction with the masculine, our interaction with our inner world, you know, and 
establishing the boundaries that support our beliefs and possibly even learning new ways to do this or, or connecting us with a teacher that is helping us um, do this. Like that is really carrying us uh, this week, learning new ways to really um, show up for ourselves and really integrate that, how like really practical ways that we can integrate that into our life because with the sun being in Taurus and Aries, it's a very uh, human sign, you know, so it's all about practicality. What can be done? What can I do to make this manifest? You know, so then we also have a sun in Uranus conjunction and um, this may be inspiring us to get out and move into nature more me being out here filming this video you know and um if we haven't already been feeling this inspired to bring more beauty into our lives you know and um really new eccentric radical ways like we might really want to change up how it is that we just relate to nature to the earth in general to even our health um we may be more uh, open to having a healthier diet or Taurus is really into fine and decadent foods. That might be something that we could be focused on for the next couple of days, really nourishing ourselves with really good food and things like that. But with the moon being in its waning phase, it's a good time to really pull that um, that really rich diet away for a little while, at least until the new moon, at least until the next full moon waxing phase. Yeah, you know? So um, we're also choosing to confidently express ourselves in a matter of state of the earth. I spoke of that health, what we can, what we can do on our part to make this world like a really better place on an economic level and also on a humanitarian level and supporting just supporting the world um especially with all the sensitive topics we have going on right now um i'm not going to get too deep into that but just you know with politics and um with everything in the religions and which is politics in itself so Let's just leave that where that is. Um, but we may also be feeling very active and supportive and um, having really sudden realizations that have us have these strong mental quick changes in how it is that we were seeing something out in the world and in that taking that back in to ourselves and just being like, well, wow, okay, this is happening. This is how I feel about something I see in the world. But how is this, how is this showing up for me in my life? Like, what is this that, um, like today in a daily card reading, the card was mirroring. It's like, what is triggering you? You know, this, these things happening out in the world, they relate to us on a micro level as well. Um, everything is a ripple effect, you know, and it's extending itself outward from within, you know, and even the things outward are coming in as maybe children experiencing these things and not really knowing how to deal with it, becoming adults and having these patterns built up in us. And it's like, oh, I'm triggered. Like, what's this? You know, so really, it's a good time to go within as well to really see this. Um, we may also be meeting different people other than ourselves. This could be at a distance. Um, and But it's not going to be so super crazy, you know, because Taurus is a really grounded sign. Like, it's very practical. It doesn't like a lot of changes to fix, you know. So it wants to have made plans and it wants things to go a certain way. It wants to, everything to be pretty. It wants to have good food. It wants to listen to its intuition and know that it's going in the right direction at all times. And it wants its money straight. Okay, so the uh, changes in finances, how we see that, how we interact with this as well, which is also speaks to that Jupiter trine with Aries, um, all that Aries energy. 
and we also have um, the moon opposite Mars. So this is balance, finding balance in what is true and what we think we know, you know, clarifying before uh, speaking will be best in this situation, you know, making sure we know what it is that we're talking about and not just blah, 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 you know, because um, Mars is in Gemini. So this is these thinky thoughts, you know, the way that we talk to ourselves and like, am I, the way I'm feeling about myself, is this really true? for me is this is are these my feelings you know that's the kind of thing that's happening here with Mars opposite um the moon and also in having faith of what needs to be communicated and caring in relation to carrying out our desires and um it could this could also bring because Gemini represents um siblings neighbors family on a level, also uh, social networking, marketing and things. So there could be some type of um, energy that comes up or experience that comes up that makes us uh, double back on what it is that we need to do to rectify uh, with these certain aspects in our life. You know, especially in regards to what we believe is true in our personal beliefs, we don't all believe the same thing, even if we come from the same family. You know, that's something that even if our, our children won't believe what we believe, they may in some fashion, but not totally. Our parents don't, our sisters don't, our brothers don't, cousins, all of that. So, you know, it's always a good time to come back down to earth and realize, well, yeah, it's okay for me to believe what I believe and it's okay for them to believe what, what they believe because that is what makes us whole. That is the individual being part of the whole, you know, that oneness that everybody talks about so much. So in the evening, which is now, because it is seven o'clock, I'm going to try and make this quick because I don't want the sun to go down on me. But um, it, it could be a sensitive evening and maybe we're feeling a little foggy again, not seeing things clearly, like our feelings could be exasperated. Um, so it's really a good time to use our imagination and create um, something like it's a good time to um, really write or um, start that podcast, you know, or because um, just interacting with others right now can be just depending on the relationship. It can bring some fog. I'm not going to say it's bad, but it's passing as the moon continues to go. So tomorrow we're experiencing a moon, King Kong's North Node, and this is like, okay, this is what I've learned, and so it needs to be integrated into my day-to-day -day life, so that um, you can, we're supported in where it is that we're headed, you know, so um, what we've been planning, the seeds that we've been planting, it's time to integrate all the things that we've been learning in relation to those seeds, and put that towards our day-to-day -day life, like um, sadhana. So making these things sacred day-to-day, -day, making it a everyday part of your life, like no questions asked, you know, type of, well, this is just who I am, you know, and this is who I'm showing up as. So we have a moon conjunct Jupiter tomorrow. So it's going to be a really good day, I feel like, like the emotions are going to great um, we're gonna be getting along with each other and um, maybe a good day to take a trip a good day to even do some um some grounded spending um spending time with family um just you know remembering the good times um we may this may even bring a woman into our life who's sharing some spiritual knowledge with us that is helping us expand in in a way um, that helps us grow in our personal development. Um, we may be thinking about learning something new, just expansion in our home life as well, especially on an emotional and spiritual level. And this can also bring new money in. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. So in the evening tomorrow, we'll be having a moon trying Uranus sun. So that'll be fun, you know. Um, because the moon will be moving into Capricorn. So this is our new emotional expression aligned with showing up in our new value systems and really easily 
doing the work to open up and seeing the worth in ourselves, you know, getting a better grip on our finances and investments and moving beyond old outdated structures, power struggles, karma, and this is in regards to money, food, tradition, things that we carry, right? So on the 24th, the 24th, which is on Wednesday, Pluto is going retrograde, y'all. All right, so it's already real. I can't even say it's getting real. Like it is, we about to go back and really take some time to go through all this shit, excuse me, all these things that we just released, you know, and even reiterating, fine, it's like a fine tooth comb, and this is going to be going down till September, I'm sorry, till October the 2nd, you know, and we are really just going to be releasing all this old karma that does not serve who it is that we are taking into our future. You know, we are releasing these power struggles. We are letting go of things that just no longer serve us, healing family stuff, you know, um, getting our debts together, um, getting better acquainted with the resources that we share with others. This can also speak of partners that we have children with, that this is going to be a really big focus of this time. And, um, really finding a better grounding and working with each other when it comes to interacting with um, those who we have children with, really uh, getting better acquainted with one another, maybe reestablishing a better relationship with one another for not just the child's sake, but for y'all energetic sake, you know? So um, let me see. So the moon on the 24th, aside from Pluto, stationing at 23 degrees and it's retrograde. So 23 degrees is five and that is bringing big changes. So things can, depending on where Pluto is in your chart, like that might feel a little chaotic at first, but the thing about the outside planets, Pluto, Uranus, Neptune, they're subtle, but they're so they're more internal, but in the sense of them being subtle, they make really big changes because it is the, 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 the minute things that really keep us moving on these patterns that um, we, are, we don't be aware of, you know? So um, Pluto and retrograde is going to be really good. Um, it, on the 24th, we had the moon square, Chiron, Venus, and Mercury. So blockages being revealed surrounding how we identify with ourselves in relation to our needs to show up in the world and the shame, guilt, hurt, wounds, um, trauma that we have built up surrounding this, you know, possibly from some childhood situations, conflict. It can also bring some conflict and stable relationships. Uh, uh. I don't really like to speak of it like that. Let me see. That's how I wrote it down. So maybe just some things that can come up that can make the relationship better. You know, seeing ways that we can make things better in our already stable relationships. Um, and others might feel some... With the moon square Venus, it can feel like maybe we're not getting enough love. But that brings back... That brings me back to that whole self-love because this is the moon in Capricorn and and then Venus and Aries. And Aries is all about the self. So this speaks of really like, okay, what do I need to do for myself? Like if you're looking for something outside of someone, it's because you're needing something yourself. You know, it's like if you're the type of person to give, give, give a lot, it's always possibly because you are looking to receive a lot of something. So this can call for some needed self-love so that you can feel that void that is happening there, you know. And um, let me see. And it, it, okay, so conflict and self-love based on old programming. So really um, getting to those old old ways that we believe ourselves to be, what detaches us from really just being it is that we need to show up as for ourselves you know and really getting um the 
the old feelings that work for us align with our new feelings, you know, and a really a need to integrate the lessons learned through these challenges. So on the 25th, um, the moon will still be in Capricorn and Mars will be um, at a king hug to the moon. So this is positive integration with the intellectual action. So um, tapping into these optimistic, positive, um, forward movement feelings of Capricorn and integrating them with uh, the, the intellectual action that we're taking, the things that we're learning, um, you know, and bringing those two together so that it can balance out um, how we move in the world, you know, and we have um, the moon sextiling Neptune. So this is going to be, the 25th is going to be a good day to um, take some action in grounding our dreams into reality. So making making way on those plans, like starting just doing one thing. Eat. One thing is good because once you do one thing, you do one thing the next day, you keep going, keep going, you know, and then the moon will be conjunct Saturn, Pluto, and North Node. So this is a release of um, emotional attachments tied to old ways of seeing ourselves being, um, how it is that we show up uh, in our relationships, you know, really revitalizing these things. This is going to be a really great energy. We might be feeling like a really great release on this day because 27th is the day of seven. So this is divine happenings here. Um, it's opposite the North Node. So this is um, remaining optimistic and really finding balance in the release and, how, and seeing how it is that that is serving us to where it is that we are going, you know, and, um, and so the things that we are being built, so being opti optimistic in these days are going to be really great for us. So on the 26th, the moon moves into Aquarius, and um, the moon will be square Uranus and the sun that evening. It's no really big it's not the the 26th is going to be a pretty chill day you know because we're going to have released all of these things and then we have this square and this sextile to chiron and venus so um we may see what needs to be done um in order to change we'll will be easily more open to the changes that need to be made surrounding our identity and how we show up in our love relationships, you know, making those radical changes, um, thinking of the other versus solely thinking of ourselves, you know, and really, um, let me see. Yeah, that's pretty much that because that moon square Uranus and sun is very similar to the moon sextile Chiron and Venus because the square the moon at Aquarius is squaring its ruler you know so this is the same energy squaring each other so it could maybe seem like some kind of conflict but there's just some change that needs to happen here some change that needs to something that needs to be integrated maybe we're facing our shadows and um really coming up out of that after releasing everything and um integrating these shadows or maybe even just releasing them all together because they just don't serve us at all anymore you know and that's a good thing too so on the 27th we'll still have uh the moon in aquarius and we'll have a moon sextile to mercury uh trying to mars and king hunks the north node so this is really being able to work working with others in a way that supports our personal agenda, not in like a manipulative way, but like a really genuine way, like, oh, I'm helping you, and oh, wow, I'm helping you, and this is helping me too. This is amazing type of thing, you know, and um, really just feeling supported by all the things that it is that we have learned, you know, up until this point, what we are have taught ourselves what we have been taught um, and really able to communicate this in a really effortless and effective way. And in that integrating all of this energy moving forward in our life, you know, and 
uh, into what's growing and choosing to alter any emotions needed to make everything work in a solid fashion, you know. So the 27th is really chill, as well as the 28th. We have some really great energy on the 28th, which is that Sunday. So this will be a really good time to spend with family because the moon will be trans. It'll be in aqua in Aquarius, and it'll be transiting to Pisces. You know, so it'll be in a sextile to Jupiter and a sextile to Uranus. And this is like really exciting and eventful energy. Um, just a lot of exciting changes, unexpected growth happening, up leveling of our values, um, really joyful connections, learning new things, uh, maybe even finding a new spiritual teacher and really, or even applying the work that we've learned from this teacher or applying the things that we've learned on our own from our own personal research, you know, so the week is going to be, it's going to be good, and it's going to be a little rocky in the middle with the, um, with Pluto going into retrograde, and he seemed like, a, oh, shit, you know, but at the same time, like, it's off because, you know nothing is ever not for us so um let's go ahead i'm gonna pull a couple of cards for those of you guys who watch my videos and who are interested in what is coming up for us this week let's see what spirit has to say what does the vine have for us this week as a collective, infinite source of divinity. What inspirations do we need? What advice do we need? What do we need to be aware of this week that will serve us as we move through all of this energy that is shifting us into our greater sense of being, our exalted and higher state of being, spirit, infinite source. Out for a second. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to pull three cards for the collective. Okay. Okay. You guys, I think it's going to be a really good week. I'm going to pull an oracle card from the Work Your Light Tarot to support this. Card from Work Your Life Zero. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is um wow. All right, so the oracle card that we got for this week is birthing a new age. Um, it says birthing new creations, dreaming a new world into being. So this can really speak to that Pluto retrograde energy, just the whole um, Aries conjunction, um, really seeing ourselves in a new way, re renewing our I, how we identify with ourselves, even our relationship with the masculine and all of these things, like doing these things internally, like I said before, it expounds onto the outward energy. And in that, it really um, assists us in changing the world, making things a better place, whether it is just um, our personal world, you know, um, our personal world, or the world of the people who we work with or just the world in general maybe we're on a very public platform you know and uh our minute changes that we're making in ourselves are affecting those who watch us as well you know so the first card we got was the judgment card and this is really um growing that discernment um that revival bringing the old with the new like what i spoke of what day is that That's uh, the 24th um, and the 25th, really bringing those old 
that old that worked together with this new integrating all aspects of ourselves so that um, we can remember our wholeness and moving forward in that and in that coming to a place of the king of stays and really just uh, building structures, building ventures, uh, building home lives, you know, um, maybe we'll come to, uh, we'll find someone of the masculine who is a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, that really um, supports us in this. Um, and also helps us move here, but this could also be us in general, just really having what it is that we need within ourselves in order to build, having all the tools that we need. And in that, coming to a six of stays, finding victory, you know, and forward movement, all the things that has happened this week and really tapping into that Mars energy, tapping into that Aries energy, and really finding success in these new adventures, these new initiatives, these new ways of being that we're, that we're choosing to be in, you know, and really acknowledging and possibly even being rewarded and um, thanked, praised in some sense for what it is that we have done and shown up as. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do all 12 signs. Um, I'm only going to pull two cards. It's getting dark, you guys. <laughs> I wanted to come and do this earlier. So listen for your sun, moon, and rising sign. Um, and if you want to listen for your Venus, your woman, your man, you can do that as well. But I'm going to just pull two cards for us. And... For each of us and I'm just going to start off with Aries and looking for Aries. What do you want for Aries this week? Aries. Aries is on the move. Aries is focused on being themselves honestly true to themselves after some time of possibly um not <laughs> you're really showing up in the world you know So many people out here at the park. And so it was a really beautiful day here in Houston today. It was hot. It was 83 degrees, but it was the sun was beating. My God. <laughs> okay. Aries. Yeah. Okay. So Aries, but the tarot card we got was the two of cups so we may be focused on that venus and aries aspect um really unifying our love with those in our lives um really this can speak of friendships but also deep romantic love and we can also say this speaks of coming together the unison of our heart and our mind you know and really being connected with ourselves being connected with that internal psychic energy within ourselves and in this bringing forth a transformation with us on a very deep and cellular level so this may be areas if you've been having uh some, some type of health issues you may find some healing going on this week that's really going to change your life healing within your relationships healing with through foods um healing through water maybe you need to get through by some water this week um what else maybe in finding balance in what it is that you consume um finding balance in how it is that you show up in your relationship so aries being focused on yourself um on ourself because i'm aries son um can really it and bringing balance to that can really help us show up better in our relationship. Okay. So, and I just have three piles here, so I'm going to be pulling. I'm not going to keep shuffling because, yeah, so Taurus, 
Swords. Six of Swords, Taurus. So moving to a new mental state. Um, moving to new heights um, beyond the old. Like no more conflict. You know, just really feeling more settled in where it is. You know, this woman, she's looking over her shoulder, kind of reminiscent of the past. But she's like, hey, these swords are behind me. Like, I ain't fighting no more. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to New Heights. I'm going to cross this river. And I'm going to see what's going on for me. And um, the Oracle card that you got is Akasha. So guidance, your guidance is divinely guided. So please just trust this. Take whatever step it is that needs to happen for you um and really just go through and make this happen this can well you know this can really speak to some changes also in the relationships that you have with others maybe your friends also um in the things that you share with others this maybe this you're leaving from some old relationship um, that is no longer served you that was kind of causing you some type of mental chaos um, and in trusting that like it's gonna carry you far like just really trust this listen to your inner guidance and um, pray about it meditate on it journal get whatever that's negative out out so that you can really support yourself with those good thoughts so it can carry you forward okay so oh, next up we have Gemini, Gemini. All right, Gemini. So Gemini, you may have been focused a lot on your work, like what it is that I'm building. I need these new ventures popping. Like what's going on? I need some movement, you know, and really um, maybe building partnerships with others because you have a lot of seventh house energy this week so um maybe you have been focused on signing contracts making deals um also you have a lot of eighth house energy and this is that whole shared resources maybe interacting with um children's uh, mother or father you know and in that and trying to make something perfect maybe um also uh a lot second house um values work bringing in your own sources of money but spirit is asking you to take a break life is not a race it is a marathon all right it is not a season it's a life's work get off the treadmill take a breather take some time to go within let the moon get small on you. Go within. Um, sit, sit with yourself, you know, like everything is really going to work out well um, for you if you can take a break and come back to it later. Take a nap this week, all right? <laughs> like, don't return those phone calls this week. Um, Put the pen down. You don't have to write this week. All those things. You don't have to move this week. You get to take time to really just focus on yourself. Go within. And when you come back, it'll everything else will be better for that time that you took off. Okay. So next up we have cancer. Oh, cancer. Cancer, you are the queen of cups. Okay. And this is like mastery of things of Venus. So maybe this week focusing on nurturing and a lot of beauty, possibly in the home, you know, focusing on what makes you feel good, what makes you feel right in your life and cultivating what it is that it, you need to build this. Um, yes, especially because you have sixth house energy this week. So this is focusing on your day-to-day -day life. Like, what's going to make you feel good day-to-day? -day? What do you need to do? You need to wake up earlier? You need to drink some water before you start going? Do you need to take a shower? Do you need to take a long, hot soak at night or something? Like, Darcy, the Oracle card you got 
what lights you up? What makes you feel, what, what is it that makes you feel good? You know, what is it that makes you feel cool? This is Jupiter in, the, in this picture. So, you know, this is really what expands you, what supports your beliefs of yourself, what gives you faith, like what makes you go, what brings you joy, what assists you in expanding, like do you need to learn something new to take care, better care of yourself this week? Um, do you need to, yeah, because you got ninth house energy as well along with your seventh house, so maybe um, cultivating uh, better relationships, and maybe that could just be with yourself, you know, a lot of times when seventh house comes up, we focus on, oh, our relationships, but nobody's ever like, hey, what's up with this relationship with our internal world, because uh, that's the house of Libra, and before Libra can find balance with people outside of themselves, they have to find balance inside, ruled by Venus, like, feel good, look good, smell good, like, I'm good, like, I feel I'm eating good, like, my money good, you know, like, what lights you up, okay, so, Cancer, for Cancer, Leo, oh, Leo, Leo, okay, so, Leo, you got some wishes coming true this week, um, you've been putting in some work, you've been, really releasing old things and it, it shows it's, it's showing it's showing up like you're clear you're happy you're feeling good and this can yeah fifth house sixth house ninth eighth twelfth like this is and it, you have a lot of great aspects with this and the fifth house speaks of romance and children and fun and joy fifth house is you you know, so, um, but for you, your fifth house is actually ruled by Sagittarius, so this is, you know, your, your, your work that you put in coming through, this is that, um, that knowledge that you've applied, that you've learned, that you've been taught, showing up in your life, and really supporting you, and in, in all of that, you know, and manifesting your wishes, you, like, hey, I'm unbound, coming unbound, I'm letting this go. You got all this sixth house Capricorn energy going on. This is releasing soul patterns, contracts, past lives. So that is all that Pluto, Saturn, North Node, Capricorn energy in your sixth house of, you know, maybe you've got some healing going on this week. Maybe you finally, finally releasing old routines that don't serve you, old habits, um, getting rid of those old enemies that you may have been aware of or not been aware of, you know, and in this finding happiness, finding um, a place where you can sit down and drink your cup and be like, hey, damn, I made it, you know, I'm here and I'm grateful. So, yes, Leo, letting go of the old to embrace the new. So we have Virgo. Virgo. Virgo, maybe you have a, maybe you are thinking about building on something new, intellectual based. Um, maybe this will come through a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius male. Um, and this could probably just be you, you know, really having all the tools that you need. You have that understanding, that awareness. You're like, no, I know. You can't tell me. I know, and I'm moving forward in what it is I know. So this is a good week to just say yes with whatever it is that you find your clear understanding with and where it guides you. Really say yes. So this can be surrounding your foundations, your roots, your home life, new knowledge, um, new learning, um, new routines maybe how you show up in the public image and assisting that that allowing to help you you know saying yes to the things that you need that that you have a very clear understanding of of your life this is like i'm not listening to you i know who i am and this is what i'm gonna do so i hope that resonates for you Virgo. like you choosing to show up and that's a wonderful thing so libra Libra, you creating. Okay. 
so Libra, we got the Princess of Pentacles, and it seems like you're coming to a place of understanding what it is that it's going to take to create the wealth that you desire in your life, how it is that you desire your family to be, your foundations, your roots, um, all of those things, like where it is that you're going, um, what you're building, what's practical for you, you know, feeling really confident in that and very sure of that. And the Oracle card is Anna, grandmother of Jesus. So this may seem kind of off, but this speaks of really seeding the light, laying foundations, divine plan. And that is what this is, that is what the Princess of Pentacles is, really choosing to um, make a plan and move in it and go with it and sticking to it and understanding that your plan is your plan and it doesn't have to look like anybody else's because Anna, grandmother of Jesus, she was the one who, well, for one, without her, there will be no Mary. And aside from not being, there not being any Mary, she also um, was the one who was like, hey, I'm you, I'm me, you're you, and together we make a whole. We are different, and that's okay, and I can do things my way, and yeah, and just moving forward in that. So that is definitely, because you have, Libra, you have a third house energy, um, which is networking and communication. So maybe you might find something um, and find yourself connecting with people and building this new source of income. Um, that'll help you stabilize home and finding new ways of creating these things. So let's see, Scorpio. Scorpio. So Scorpio, you have the emperor this week. So you're very aware of your power that's within you this week. You see what is capable and you're ready to go forth in that especially you have a lot of second house energy so this is values and bringing in your own source of income knowing who it is that you are and moving on that you know um being very sure of yourself but at the same time um taking some time to sit with this with what's coming up because regardless you're moving into this you don't really have to do anything because it's a major arcana card you know um spirit just asks of you to recognize this and in that maybe fill up your well with all the things that is that you're gonna need to carry you and support you through this new journey that you're taking with all this experience you have all this knowledge you have you're about to take a an initiation an initiative on a new to a new place and in that taking time to rest and refuel can really support you in being your best and showing up in this place for yourself you know really because um the power card is the ego essence and the ego let us stop demonizing our ego because ego is what shows us up you know like it is who we it is what carries us Spirit doesn't show up like it inside, you know, it is our spirit that um, helps us create our personal expression. But the ego is like, hey, I'm here. It's like, hey, I'm Chanel, you know, and this is what I do. And I'm doing this right now, you know. So um, making sure you are full so that you can give that fullness to others. In, um, creating and also because emperor speaks of i'm thinking now of new structures you have a lot of fourth house energy this week so from that second house going to that fourth house it's like hey okay i'm building this network here to support my foundation building new structures this is after that um Pluto, when Pluto goes into retrograde, you are remembering like, oh shit, this is what I need to do. Like I'm doing this and I don't care what anybody else is saying. Like I'm going for it. The power card is a card of Aries. 
All right, so this is you reintegrating uh, um, what you love about yourself in who you identify yourself as. And that is gonna take some time and that's okay. Just take some time to rest. It might happen overnight. We got this Uranus and Taurus conjunct sun in um, Taurus. So anything can happen for real. It, it's, it's already happening if you don't feel that already. So we have Sagittarius. Sagittarius. Oh wow. Okay. So Sag, you have first, second, third, fourth house energy this week, right? So what do you need to make a decision on? Do you have a choice you need to make? Do you need to pick the high road or the low road? Or do you need to not the low road, but do you need to stay where you are? Like what is best gonna serve you right now? Like who is it that you need to show up as so that you can get the best results that you desire? What is going to bring harmony to your life this week in order for you to manifest that passive income that you desire that is going to help you be able to maybe building something? Um, and this is just off tangent based off of your astrology this week maybe building something that you can communicate make money through the internet um that might be something that come up through social networking um this is going to bring something that'll help you get into your foundations your uh maybe something of your roots something you already know you already know these things you know so the oracle says align your life what no longer is in alignment with who it is that you truly are right so what decisions that you need to make what do you need to let go of during this pluto retrograde doing this uh moon pluto south node saturn conjunction what is changing for you what in your life needs to transform what needs to be integrated and what needs to be let go of in order for you to come full circle you know and this can also speak of your love relationships um, is there somebody you are focused on building a future life with? If so, it's a good time to let go of anything that is no longer serving you and being in that role that you were required of in being that person and showing up in your best self for that person. Because you do have a lot of seventh house energy that needs to be integrated this week in regards to who it is how you feel yourself is worthy because this love card can also um talk stem at worth like it's a a six card so you know yeah you find in harmony but where is it that you need to find harmony at like are you feeling are you worthy you are so just show up in that align your life this week and everything is going to work out for the best so capricorn Oh, Capricorn. Okay. Capricorn, you have the Princess of Cups. And the Princess of Cups speaks of um, being able to create a very beautiful life, you know, um, really tapping into this Uranus, this Taurus energy, this Sun and Taurus energy. Um, you know, like, okay, you. this is a recognizing of what it is that you must do now in order to go forward in this. And in that, you are you're going to make it happen. Like it, you just have to apply the work and you need to let go of whatever it is that is. Yes. Because this is 12th house. Okay. You have a lot going on in your 12th house this week. So this is really going within and seeing where it is that you need to expand in recognizing what it is that need that is needed to expand. What do you need to let go of? What old karma? Because um, you have here, can you see that? This lighting, protection. Call back your power, cut the cord, soul retrieval. So come back to you, come back to center, come back to faith, you know, and remember who it is that you are through all of these things, like everything that you've been through like it was all for something and it was all for you to remember that hey I'm I'm good I'm whole I'm great you know and in that coming returning um 
to a place where you can show up in a person that you're happy to be seen in, you know, a person that you feel good about, you know, so um, maybe put in a new routine for yourself, take care of your, maybe water. Every We all need some water this week, obviously. Um, baths, salts, uh, water-filled foods, fruits, vegetables, salads, um, things of that nature, you know, and uh, your worth. Don't base your worth off of what it is that you do for yourself because you're already worthy. You're just doing these things for yourself because you deserve them. They make you feel good, you know, and maybe you need to release the old way of seeing things like, oh, I need to do this because something's wrong with me. And it's like, no, nothing is wrong with you. You are fine. Um, it, but if it makes you feel better, then yeah, go ahead and do that, you know? So Capricorn, I hope that resonates with you. Ooh, I did a good job. <laughs> okay, so Aquarius. Oh, Aquarius, okay. So Aquarius, you got some new messages coming through. Like you've been a under come to an understanding that'll help you move into this next step of life. It's the Prince of Swords. Like you are ready, right? And it is in this readiness, you're going to be able to move forward with this clear understanding and really know who it is. And really, you're probably even going to make some new connections because you have a lot of 11th house energy. Um, and being able in these connections to be able to really show up at the end of the week in the role it is that you've been waiting on. You know, you got the initiation as the oracle card. The light's getting dim, y'all. Sorry. The initiation. So this is rites of passage. You're going somewhere sacred. Like you're gonna take a journey on a place you haven't been yet. And it's yeah, you're gonna be able to show up fully in yourself because the the Prince of Swords. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Prince of Swords is you. You know. So um, just. You know, you don't even have to be on, on the lookout. It's coming through, whether it's through a download or through somebody you meet. But I really think you're going to be meeting somebody this week who is going to give you the information that you need so that you can move forward. Okay, so Pisces. Oh, Pisces. Pisces. We're finally on Pisces. Pisces. My sweet, sweet Pisces. You got the Ten of Pentacles. So you're really feeling grounded this week, feeling at home, feeling that you have made it, you feeling complete in all the goals that you've been trying to attain as of late, and in that, um, really being able to move forward and, and bring home what it is that you've been desiring, all this work that you've been putting in has been serving you, you got the Minotaur, right, so the Minotaur, the Mintankan, I'm sorry, longing for home, belonging, the original light worker. So maybe things might not be feeling as at home as you would desire right now. Um, this also speaks to me of you showing up in a better, in a more, a light that you would desire to, you know, being more out there with who it is that you are and able to bring in. So um, I feel like you already are feeling at home. And if not already feeling at home, you're moving toward the direction of getting there. So I hope that that resonates for you, Pisces. Okay, you guys, I am done. The sun is going down. Thank you so much for being here with me, for taking some time to um, to listen, to connect with me. And I hope that this was helpful for you all. Um, if it was, please like, share, subscribe to my channel. Um, share this with someone who needs it. And I love you guys so much. And I hope y'all have a wonderful, wonderful week. And that you are blessed with all the things that you need in your life moving forward that will support you in your highest.
your highest, your best self, whoever it is that you're reaching towards. All right. I love you guys so much. Have a wonderful evening. I'll talk to you soon.